Hi, this is Nancy Damiano, Garden Girl at Two Peas in a Bucket, with this week's Moments video. This week's episode features a page about things that I'm loving right now in the month of February. One of the major um, embellishments on the page are based on these arrows that I keep seeing on Pinterest. And I wanted to recreate this on a scrapbook page. I also started the page with this sketch and my idea was to center everything, photos, journaling, and all the embellishments down the center of the page. And you'll see that this idea um, drives everything that I put down. Um, let's take a quick look at some of the things I pulled. This paper, the ombre, is from Crepe Paper. It's This one's from the Flea Market collection. I actually ended up using one that looks almost exactly like it from the Love Notes. And this is some nice wood grain from Glitz and some daily flash washi, some feathers that I needed for my arrow, a few um, transparent frames, more frames from Jelly Bean, my enamel dots, a gold rub on from Studio Calico, mini flare from Dear Lizzie, cork arrows, and these um, brush script. Uh, thickers that I'm loving right now. So these are the basic colors that I chose. It all came from those uh, feather die cuts from Studio Calico since I'm basing the page around that arrow. Now let's get started on the page. The first thing that I did was run the pattern paper through my printer and I centered all my journaling. Um, I do have a wide format printer, an Epson 1400. I've had it for years. Um, although if you don't have that type of printer, you could always use a sheet of vellum like this in a landscape orientation and just cut out the strips and you're going to get the same effect more or less um, that I have here on the page. Now remember that because it's based on a sketch, I had an idea where this journaling was going to go. I did want to use three photos of um, things that just represent me right now. And these are from Jelly Bean Soup. They're cut out of this nice wood green paper. They come with all different types of uh, cutouts on them, hearts and words and things. But I chose to use the plain ones because I knew I was going to have enough going on. I didn't need any more words um, sort of standing out in the middle of the page. Now, in order to get all my title and embellishments and things um, centered in the, on the page, I am going to measure six inches and I'm just going to make little um, guidelines all the way down the middle of the page. And that way I can work off that center line going all the way down. The first thing I'm going to start out with here is part of my title. My whole title is Loved Right Now. So I'm going to do part of it, the right now part of it, with these tiny wood letters from Studio Calico. And um, I know that I'm going to use the brush script letter to write out loved. So I specifically chose this really tiny font um, for the subtitle. I like titles that are mixed up in sizes and the two extremes will um, look good one stacked on top of each other. Now to separate those two, I'm gonna use these mini flare buttons from Dear Lizzie's Daydreamer collection. I love the size of these. Um, flare is usually about one inch wide. These are three quarters of an inch. 
and they're great where you can use multiple uh, mini flare uh, on a page like this and it won't overwhelm the page and I think they'll be good also for project life. Now I used my center guideline, the little pencil mark that I had made before and that's how I um, centered that mini flare and now I can work the, the title off the left and the right sides of that. And I looked at it and it needs a little pop of color, a little more color there between the pink and the wood. So I'm going to use red um, tiny enamel dots there. Now to get those wood letters down, I usually will put down uh, just a little bit of the Scotch quick drying glue. I make a little puddle there and I always need my tweezers because if not I get glue everywhere. And I just lightly dip them in. You really don't need very much of this glue to get um, these down really well. You just have to work extra carefully. I'm going to finish up with these wood letters and then we'll come back and finish the title piece. Okay, now that these have dried, I can finish up with the loved portion. It's going to go right up at the top, centered again with my brush script alphabet. Since I can't do it with paint, I'm not a good painter. Um, I'm glad that they made these um, brush script letters. So I still have those faint pencil marks in the center. And I'll just speed this up a little bit. And work on finishing up that title. Now moving on to the photos, I printed out three photos of things that I always love. Although the page is based around what I'm loving right now, um, two things don't change. The kids, my niece, nephew, and son, and places I like to vacation. Beaches, which I'm dreaming of right now, and then a picture of myself. Now right in the center of all this journaling, I'm going to repeat the element on the top uh, by adding another mini flare badge, both for color and for shape. And I also need something a little bit wider in this embellishment space, which is why I choose to go with some enamel dots. I love these by Doodlebug. They did such a nice job with the ombre on these. And it also repeats the ombre that's going on in the background on the paper. So I'll go from largest to smallest, darkest to lightest. And then I just use that ruler to make sure that it's going to be even on the left and right sides. And that just looks like a little bit of candy right in the middle of the page. Next, I'll frame out the photos. Um, I like this wood grain because I think it makes the photos really stand out. There's a lot going on here, but always the photos are the most important to me. And a little tip, leaves do not cut out the photo exactly the two and a half by two and a half because it'll be very difficult to get them down um, onto the frames. If you leave a little bit of white, like on that picture of myself, it makes it that much easier. I didn't do that with this center picture and it was a little struggle to get it on there. Now 
Now moving the photos around, um, I choose the people on the outsides and the place on the inside. And it, the photos just lay better that way. They look better anyway. Broken up rather than two people photos next to each other. Now to my favorite part of the layout, what it was sort of inspired by was the arrow. I used a bamboo wooden skewer that I picked up in the supermarket. Um, and I just cut it down to size. These feather die cuts from Studio Calico I've had for a long time. Never knew really what to do with them. They're sort of too small to really make a big impact or statement on a page, but gathered together, I think that they look really good. And I use the gray, aqua, red, yellow. They come in three or four different sizes, so it's easy to um, make a design with them. I also used quick drying glue here to glue them together. It wasn't the easiest thing though. And about here, it starts to fall apart and I get frustrated. And when that happens, I put a staple on it. Anything gives me a hard time, gets a staple. I'm not patient enough, I guess, for the quick drying glue. And then I cut out the front of the um, arrow of just some gray cardstock. You could use a heart as well. I've seen that, it looks very cute. I didn't here because I just wanted the focus to be on arrows and not hearts, even though it's a February page. I wanted to get away from the Valentine's look. I'm just gonna glue on that little cluster of feathers on the back. And that I did give a few minutes to dry because I don't want that coming off of there. And I molded the um, front of the arrow to the stick a little bit just to give it dimension. It was looking a little fake if, if it was just completely flat. And then I have this twine. It's just embroidery twine, I think it is. I bought this at a local craft store and I'm just gonna wrap those ends around to finish it off. Now, another idea that you can do that I kind of wish that I did now looking back on the pages, you could also wrap some washi tape along the center of the arrow for some color. And if you look back at the photo that I showed of the arrows from Pinterest, you'll see that they're painted. So either paint or washi tape along the center would have been kind of a cool idea. Now looking back at it, then you can see a close-up of how it turns out. That just gives a texture. It makes it look a little bit more like a real arrow. And then I'm going to center that also. And I'm going to get it down on the actual page with pop dots down at the die cut end. So that gives me some, some slack for the bumpiness of the um, wooden stick. Plus pop dots are really a pretty strong adhesive. I know that that arrow is not gonna fall off my page. And a glue dot for the front, because I don't wanna add any height to the front or any more bumpiness than there is already there. Centered just under that journaling, frames it out perfectly, and we're done. Now on the bottom of the page, I'm missing two things. First of all, I have this blank space. And second of all, I don't think this page has enough color. So that's why I specifically chose this washi tape. It's just very pretty. And um, it has all the colors that the feathers have. And I thought it would just be a nice underline of color right at the bottom of the page. Now looking at the photos, I feel they need a little more pop of color and layering here. So I'm going to try out all these transparency frames. This is from Crepe Paper, the Love Notes collection. 
and I decide that the sides need just a little pop of very pale pink. Um, and again, it draws the eye to the photos. So I'm just going to tuck these right under the frames. And there's also really tiny hearts printed on them. You probably can't see them in the video, but... Now, right underneath that mini badge there, there is a space um, that I wanted to fill as well. It just looks a little plain there, and that's where these rub-ons from Studio Calico come in. And in gold strip, it says, I love you to the moon and back. So that goes well with my theme. And I like the little script handwriting, and it just, just fits. One of those decisions you make afterwards. Now I know it looks something like I'm rubbing hard, but I'm not. It's just because the video sped up. Just be careful with those. Don't rub them that hard. Now I'm looking for a few more things to put down on the page. I don't think there's enough centered embellishment here. I don't want anything bumpy. So what I decided to use was some roller stamps. Um, and at the top, what I'm going to add is the beginning of the month. So since the page represents the month of February, on the top, um, I will stamp February 1st, 2014. And then on the bottom, I stamped, um, it says on this date, February 28th, 2014. So it's sort of sandwiching my month. Under that, I also stamped um, another word, currently. And then the very last touch is to repeat the arrow um, embellishment. I wanted to repeat that over and over again on the page. And I used um, some cork from Studio Calico right in that center frame. Another word at the top says date. And then I decide to put two more arrows because one just wasn't enough. And actually I do like the three arrows. Again, brings your eye back to those photos and because the cork matches the wood grain, they kind of blend into each other. And there you have it. Um, I can tell you one thing about the frames, the, those jelly bean soup frames are sold out, but I'm going to link up some cut files, stamps, and die cut sheets that are in this exact same shape so you can um, cut those frames out yourself. And the page is complete. Now while this page is specifically about things that I'm loving right now in the month of February, you can use this exact same design to do anything that you're loving. Um, I thought about doing a page exactly like this with all centered elements about my niece and her love for Rainbow Loom right now. I could even um, thread a few of the rubber bands from the Rainbow Loom through the arrow um, as memorabilia. I hope this design and story helps you out the next time you're sitting down to scrapbook. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.